Jeannie Cunyon had big plans for motherhood. Then she had kids. Four of them, as a matter of fact, all boys. Well, soon Jeannie found herself falling short of her own standards, and it was driving her crazy. As a mother of four boys, author Jeannie Cunyon says she was determined to be the perfect mom with perfect kids. But her plan unraveled when the stress of pretending to have it all together left her fearful, angry, and feeling guilty. Moms are under so much pressure. We're told that we have to get it all right for our kids to turn out right. We're told that their entire futures are riding on our ability to perfectly orchestrate their lives. In Mom Set Free, Jeannie shares how she found relief from the pressures of parenting and how you can become the mom you long to be for your kids. Jeannie Cunyon is with us now, and we welcome her back to the 700 Club. It's Thank great to have so you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. What a great book. Thank I you. mean, every every woman should read this prior to having her children, but she won't really get it till after she yes. has her children. <laughs> it's once you have children. Yeah. Yes. What were your expectations before you had children about motherhood? Very unrealistic. Uh, I had set a very high bar. I was raised in a really wonderful home with parents who set a great example for me, and I thought, how hard can this be? Yeah. Right? It's, how hard it's can expected this be? of me must be achievable, right? Yes. You know, one of the other things about having anything that's perfectionism driven in our lives, I think, Jeannie, is it sounds so good. You know, there are other things like addiction or, you know, gossip or whatever that could be short falls in our lives, shortcomings in our lives that sound as bad as yes. they are. But yes. perfectionism somehow contains that word perfect and we feel like we should be able to achieve yes. that. How did that impact you? Well, the reality that perfection actually becomes an idol in our lives yeah. was very convicting for me. And as I began to read and better understand freedom in Christ and discovering that if I even had a shot at perfection, then Jesus Christ died for nothing. And so it gave me this new freedom to say to my kids, hey, I'm not the one you want your eyes on. I'm not the one you want to worship. There is only one who has never and will never let you down. And that one is not me. That is Jesus. So how, how did your quest for perfectionism impact you before you came to the realization you just talked about? I mean, how did, how did you have that aha moment of, I, I can't do this? Uh, there were several moments where I saw the um, shame that I was living in because I felt so ashamed of my inability to be who I wanted to be for my kids as I witnessed that shame flowing out of me and into my parenting. Yeah. And that was very convicting and that's when I really fell on my knees and said, God, I need your grace. I need to know your grace if I want to be able to give my grace to your kids. I wanted so desperately to reflect the heart of God to them, mm -hmm. but I wasn't receiving his heart for me. For every Christian mom, I think that is the bottom line. And you do feel like it's my responsibility to be sure that they get it, you yeah. know, that, that their little hearts are transformed. But the truth of the matter is we really can't transform a heart, right. can we? Right. We can help them understand what's going on inside of it. Yeah. We have a very important role to play in their lives, but we cannot transform it. And so freedom comes when we remember that God is sovereign, not us. We are significant, but we are not sovereign. So share a little bit about how you do bring that message to your children. Because when kids are little, you know, I, our understanding includes words like propitiation, yeah. atonement. I mean, where are you going with your kids right. with that? And how do you show them the reality of what Jesus did and who he is? Yeah. Weaving the gospel into our everyday lives looks a lot like me being willing to say, me too. Yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. I struggle too. Being willing to say sorry when I fall and get it wrong. Um, coming alongside them in their weakness rather than down on them. Um, really just a desire to reflect God's heart in those moments yeah. where they stumble and fall just like I do. Yeah. You, you share a moment in the book where you and your son had a little <laughs> altercation with each other and you were so unhappy with your response that you just got down on the ground next to him. Talk about that. Yeah, it was a, it was an er it was a time in my parenting when I was very much living in shame. And so I was parenting with that and he had made a mistake. And when he had done that, I said something like, how could you? Who does something like that? Mm -hmm. And the look in his eyes broke my heart. And it was a very convicting and freeing moment in my parenting because it was the Lord's invitation to me to say, oh, I know why you do that, son, because I do that too. Yeah. I need Jesus too. And we prayed together and I asked for his, his forgiveness and we, and we received the Lord's forgiveness together. You know, the, our kids do have a tendency to put us 
at, at the top of the heap rather than God unless we yeah. acknowledge our shortcomings yeah. and our need, unless yeah. we are willing to apologize. apologize. I think sometimes people feel like if they do that, they're giving free license to their child to, you know, behave as, as they say, well, you do it. Right. Why can't I do it? But it right. doesn't work like that. It doesn't. And I think if we want, if we want to raise kids who confess sin willingly and repent mm. sincerely, then, then we have to go first. Yeah. They have to see in us a freedom in Christ to say, hey, we have a Savior, a rescuer mm -hmm. who has forgiven us and His mercy is new every morning and we are free, yeah. free from that condemnation and shame. You know, you share a, a, another incident in the book about a woman who was teaching young people in a class, children in yes. a class, and she asked two questions. I mean, it was really, I thought to myself as I read it, boy, my kids would have answered like that when they were little. She said, how many of you think that you have to be good for God to love you? And this was teaching children in a Sunday school mm -hmm. room, and, and it revealed that we are um, performance oriented. We're very performance yeah. oriented, even in our relationship with God. Yeah. And He desires to free us from that so that we will love Him and serve Him, not yeah. for His love, yeah. but from a place of already yeah. knowing we are loved. And her second question was and if you aren't good or you do something bad, how many of you believe? It changes whether God loves you or that not. He'll stop loving yeah, you. And stop. again, she said, all of the children raise their hands. Yeah, yeah. Boy, that's not the message we want to send. It is not to our kids. So, how do you parent? I, I mean, you're you've got a 13 year old, almost 13, and a one year old. Yes. Now, those are two and opposite. A ten and an eight in between. <laughs> yeah. Opposite ends of the spectrum for yeah. the oldest and the youngest. How yeah. do you bring this message differently to each of them? Oh, do we have the whole hour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to talk about that. It's, um, this, is the, this is the key question for me, what, regardless of their age. How can I reflect the heart of God in this moment? Mm -hmm. That's what parenting with grace really is. It's not the absence of boundaries and consistency and rules. All of those things are so essential. It's just how can I weave the unconditional love of God into how I handle this moment with my 13-year-old, 10-year-old, 7-year-old, and even my 1-year-old. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think it's so easy to get caught up in just the, the messiness of day-to-day -day living. But what you're really talking about in Mom Set Free, your book, is parenting with intention. Yes. And specific goals, like you just mentioned, in mind. And you make it so clear that Thank it can you. be done. Yeah. And so I, I just want to say to those of you who are moms, this is a book you just can't get enough of. But you can get more of what we've talked about today. Jeannie's great advice by getting her books. It, it's called Mom Set Free. Find relief from the pressure to get it all right. It's available in stores nationwide, and it'll give you all the info and the ammo that you need to parent the way your heart really wants to. Yeah. And we so often feel our own weakness and insufficiency in that. Jenny, yes. thank you for being with us. What a thank great you for message you bring. Me. Such yeah. a pleasure. Wonderful. Mom, set free. Thank get you. set free.